Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another edition of my Blu-ray haul. Got another nice stack of Criterions. You know, got to take advantage of those great deals over at Barnes & Noble while they last. You know, 50% off on Criterions till around the first week of August or so. But anyway, first I want to talk about this brand new release, which I finally got a chance to see it. And it's called Free Fire. And it's executive produced by Martin Scorsese. And uh, the film is about these uh, gangs, group of gangs. And uh, they're trying to settle the score with this arms deal. And it's basically an arms deal gone bad. And uh, just causes them to have this crazy shootout, uh, you know, one after another, just guns blazing like crazy. And yeah, the main film just takes place in the warehouse. And going in, I enjoy the first half, but then to be honest, the whole shootout thing kind of got old towards the second half. But had, uh, you know, decent music. You get Creedence Clearwater, Run Through the Jungle, one of my favorite uh, songs from the 70s. But uh, yeah, it's a movie, like I said, worth watching at least once. You get an audio commentary as far as special features and the making of featurette. The aspect ratio is in the 2x39 format. And uh, to be honest, I'm not the biggest Brie Larson fan. It's something about her eyes that kind of freaks me out. You know, she always has that startled look on her face. But uh, she's a good actress, but I'm just not the biggest fan. Um, you also get Army Hammer in here. And uh, as far as picture and audio quality for this, I'm going to rate the image a 4 out of a 5. Has decent black levels, but overall, it's rather soft looking picture to it. And uh, as far as the audio mix, I'm going to rate that a, a 4.5 out of a five so anyway that is free fire the next film i picked up is a uh, arrow release and that is called stormy monday which is a, a crime drama i've uh, never seen this film but i heard a lot of great stuff about it. it has a great cast too melanie griffith tommy lee jones and the singer sting sean bean of course he's famous for you know being in the lord of the rings films as well as 007's golden eye so yeah this looks tons of fun and man great looking cover art on this one let me see who is it by Artwork by uh, JC. Yeah, great job, JC. This looks like a really fun film. And this came out in 1988. And the next film I got is, is another Arrow release, but this one is from Arrow Academy. And Arrow Academy is very much like Criterion, you know. Uh, it usually has like a nice looking you know, picture and audio quality, has nice supplements and whatnot. So this is a Western film, which is uh, directed by Joseph uh, Lewis. And uh, this happens to be Joseph Lewis's 41st and uh, final motion picture after this he went off and uh, he did a bunch of uh, different uh, he directed a bunch of tv shows but uh he's famous for directing a couple of well-known you know uh, film noir movies like the big combo and gun crazy but yeah this looks like it's gonna be tons of fun and i dig the artwork nice job on that and uh one of the main stars of this film is uh, sterling hayden and sebastian uh, Cabot, i guess his name is and sebastian is uh famous for uh, doing the voice of uh Bagheera in uh, the you know animated version of the Jungle Book, Disney's Jungle Book. So anyway, that is Terror in a Texas Town. So once I check out these two, I'll check back with you guys and uh, do a full review on you know as far as picture and audio quality. Next up, I picked up the television series and that is Shooter, starring uh, Ryan Philippe and Omar Epps. And this is executive produced by Mark Wahlberg. As you know, he starred in the film Shooter, so this is like based off the the motion picture. But uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. This is released by Universal uh, Pictures, Universal Studios. Looks like it's going to be tons of fun on this one. As far as special features, you just get the making of a shooter featurette. And uh, USA Network picked up uh, season two, so that's coming up uh, yeah this summer. So I got to check out when that's going to be uh, airing. So that is Shooter. Also wanted to give you guys a heads up on a couple 4K releases, which I've done full reviews for on my channel, so you can definitely look there for more info. Kong Skull Island, really fun adventure film, as well as Scarlett Johansson and Ghost in the Shell. And uh, both of these releases look absolutely fantastic in 4K. And if you haven't uh, made the jump to 4K, <laughs> let me tell you, these are the releases that should definitely uh, make you purchase the 4K setup, especially Ghost in the Shell. And Kong too, man, they just... Both look really spectacular in 4K. But uh, yeah, I had a ton of fun with Ghost in the Shell. It does have that similar vibe to, uh, you know, Blade Runner and whatnot. And uh, Kong, you know, to be honest, uh, like I said in my previous review for this one, um, I didn't really expect much from it, but I was pleasantly surprised. They did a really great job. And I've always been a huge fan of, you know, Kong films starring with the original one. And he, as well as uh, Peter Jackson's version from 2005, King Kong, which uh, they also recently released in 4K, which I still got to check out. I haven't seen what that looks like in 4K. But if you've seen the uh, King Kong film in 4K, the 2005 version, let me know in the comments uh, You know what you think on that. 
Alrighty, so let me show you guys my Criterion pickups. Finally got uh, Ghost World, one of my favorite quirky comedy films of all time. You know, it has like a bit of a dry sense of humor. Also features uh, Steve Buscemi, one of my favorite actors. Uh, just Buscemi being in this film alone as well worth the purchase price. So yeah, this one's directed by Terry Zwigoff, who is uh, famous for directing a couple other notable films like Crumb, the documentary, which uh, Criterion released many years back on Blu-ray, as well as uh, Bad Santa, the original Bad Santa, you know, with Billy Bob Thornton, of course. So this film is about a couple high school friends, which, um, you know, the only thing that they have going for them after high school is moving in with each other. And uh, they need like a sense of direction in life. So that's when Steve Buscemi's character comes in. But yeah, definitely do check out this film. And if you've seen the film and if you enjoy it, you definitely know what I'm talking about. A really wonderful movie. It has a lot of special features, too. I can't believe this film came out back in uh, 2001. I had the original, uh, the screener copy of this on VHS. So it's been what now? It's like. 15, 16 years old, this movie. Unbelievable. The next film I got is The Lodger, which is uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. And this is a silent film from 1927. And uh, this happens to be Hitchcock's, I believe, either third or fourth film. But he considers this one to be his true directorial debut. So I uh, can't wait to see this one. You know, it's a murder mystery film. And I heard Criterion uh, did a brand new uh, sound mix for this. So I can't wait to hear that, too. It has a nice amount of supplements. It's going to be tons of fun. So that is The Lodger. Moving on, the next film I picked up is a Robert Bresson picture, and this is a French film called L'Argent, which means money in English. And uh, this happens to be Bresson's final picture that he directed, and Criterion also released a couple of his other films on Blu-ray many years back. One is called The Man Escaped, great uh, prison escape film, as well as uh, Pickpocket. That was another you know, wonderful movie. So uh, this one is about this uh, counterfeit money that gets passed from one person to the next until it lands in the hands of this innocent man. And unfortunately, he has to pay the price for it, for something that uh, he didn't do. But uh, yeah, definitely worth your time. Beautifully directed. Although certain scenes, I have to admit, it was a bit of a drag. It's like, okay, come on, we get the point. Let's move on. But other than that, great release. And this came out in uh, the early 80s. Let me see what year it came out. It's like uh, 1983. So yeah, that is L'Argent. My next pickup is a Andrew Hay film, which is called 45 Years, starring Charlotte Rampling. And both Charlotte and Andrew were at the uh, Criterion Closet in 2015, around the time when they were, you know, promoting this film. And, uh, you know, it was funny, uh, in the closet they were making fun of Ivan's Childhood, which uh, is released by, uh, you know, Criterion. It's a Russian film, and they were saying how that film makes you fall asleep. But, to be honest, this film made me fall asleep. Although the cinematography is beautiful in the exterior shots of, uh, you know, this village town where this film is shot... But uh, it was just a really lost opportunity, at least in uh, you know my book. It was just one of those endings where it leaves you hanging, where you expected more from it, and it just didn't deliver. So, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of writing like that. To me, that's really lazy writing. Uh, you know, there was really no conclusion to this film. But anyway, some people may like this film, but uh, I certainly didn't. But I did appreciate the cinematography. And, uh, you know, you just get, uh, as far as special features, eh, some decent amount of special features or whatever is included. I haven't even taken a look at it. I was just really disappointed by it. But uh, I'm a huge fan of Charlotte Rampling. You know, she's uh, one of the main stars of that uh, great film called The Night Porter, which also Criterion has released. But yeah, uh, word of caution for this film, don't expect much from it if you haven't seen it. So that is 45 years. And finally, I picked up Jacques Tati's Playtime, which uh, is considered to be his uh, masterwork. And this is the film that uh, caused uh, Jacques to go bankrupt, and there was just a lot of issues with this movie. It cost too much to make, and I heard it's a really bizarre film. I haven't seen it yet, just basically unwrapped it. And, uh, of course, they got the box set of this, the complete Jacques Tati uh, collection. But I just wanted this one, because this is considered to be his best one, so we'll see what it's like. So anyway, thanks again, guys, for taking a look. Another nice stack of Criterions. I'm going to have more Criterions coming soon, so definitely look out for those in my next update. So until uh, next time, take care and I'll see you soon.